We are live. Welcome to Reason Speak. I am Sydney Winston. Today is Thursday. Today's Monday, 16th of November, 2015. With us today, so far, we have John. John Kane. Hi, John. Hi, how's it going? I don't know. I'm fucked up. <laughs> I, I'm watching the world. I'm watching the news. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the free world just collapse. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to make of anything anymore. Well, I think um, with what's gone on in Paris over the last week, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where now we really start to see how stupid fundamentalist ideologies can blow up not only in the people who or who believe the shit space, but when they do blow up, have drastic, drastic effects. Mm. And it's kind of a fucking downer. But what I see, seriously, what I see is a world where <clears throat> back in the 30s and 40s, when uh, when Nazi atrocities were taking place, we went in there and we fucking took care of them. We, we made sure that 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 whole that whole system was was disarmed, was disbanded, was eliminated. Now I see a kind of a state, Nazi state. I don't know what to call it. This Islamic state. Let's call it the Islamic state. But it's a it's a you know it's a territory with borders flowing. Yes, but with borders. The atrocities that we're seeing, though, are exponentially worse, I believe, than what was taking place in the, in the 40s. I mean, um, people survived the concentration camps. People were fed minimally, and they were, you know, they were, uh, there was something there that, that was more than what people under ISIS have right now, yet nobody wants to eliminate them nobody you know they want to drop bombs they don't want to hurt anybody else in eliminating these guys are a fucking problem that if they're not eliminated it's going to be an either us or them situation how would we do that i was watching a um uh, a hangout yesterday and um uh, one of our one of the atheist arch enemies matt bell uh came up with something actually i thought that that was a very smart smart um resolution to this thing and he said use special ops you can use a special ops of the united states united kingdom everywhere everybody's got special ops that really are good right that's what you use you go in and you get them you don't you don't you know necessarily bomb them and send in the ground troops you use special ops I agree with him on that. I, I think it's more so with any religion. And I'm, I'm going to throw this out there because really what's driving this is this monolithic, faceless, except for the people who believe it, you know, monster this belief is. Now, with like any belief structure, what one asshole two towns over believes might not be the same as this asshole over here. However, with ISIS, it's much more like you said of a free flowing. They have ideas, they're motivated, they have guns, obviously. Now, with me, why I think this is different than the 40s is it's not the 40s technology advances and as technology advances we inevitably as humans find a way to kill each other quicker um so it, it's very different and in a region where for the most part you have intelligent people but there's still such a strong foothold that doesn't want to let go of this bronze age teaching that's going to lead to trouble. I well, mean, it's, it's it has led to trouble. It's exactly. not gonna, there's nothing gonna or going to yeah. about anything it about already, it. Already it. Has. it. It already has. It already has. 
on now, more than one occasion. Okay, we also know that foot soldiers for the Islamic State are readily available, thousands of them, because we've got the examples of the madrasas, okay, in the, um, Saudi and Pakistan and Indonesia and whatnot. That's where they start grooming these kids from, from a very young age to sort of think mm -hmm. Wahhabi. Um, but with all the turmoil in the world that all the with all the the killing and the hatred and the acrimony and the um it just seems that people are being especially young kids they are so impressionable they when you're when you're 18 19 20 21 hell the, you know the whole world is open to you and if there's if there's something to go to that's exciting and that, and that you've been sort of indoctrinated uh, into for example the glorious um uh, uh contribution you'd make by going to war and killing infidels and so on and so forth there are tens of thousands of these young warriors i think available trained ready to go and I think that's why I, I, the Islamic State has been so brazen in setting it up and doing what they're doing because they're ready. I've heard, uh, I believe it was uh, Monday Matt did a story several months back where he talked about how ISIS was actually getting called out for nepotism. Nepotism. To, nepotism. It's where someone give someone else preferential treatment usually when they're family that kind of shit like uh the syrian regime yeah for um example. like the north korean regime for yes example. um like but, the kazakhstan or wherever the fuck regime there's a guy out there who's a dictator as well yeah exactly and with this a lot of her some people were pissed because nepotism was being showed in people who I believe were going to be suicide bombers. And to me, that scares the shit out of me to know that there are some people that are so goddamn crazy that they're going to believe what this book says, go into a room and just blow the fuck out of themselves and everybody else simply because they're doing the right thing. To me, that is frightening as fuck. And it needs to be combated with the most swift and effective means. And I fully agree. And I think the only reason we don't send in special forces is because in some of the areas where they're hiding, governments, notwithstanding just one, have assets in the region and they're trying to protect it, be it oil, be it silica for fucking computer chips or anything else. And it's just all this, we need to, you know, try to minimize the casualties while we make as much fucking money as possible. And it's kind of a gross way to look at shit. I haven't followed exactly to the, you know, all the details of what happened in Paris. But what I gather is that it was a scene unlike, uh, it was a scene similar exactly similar to what used to happen in israel before there was you know a, a, a uh, the walls and the and the anti-terrorism structure in place in paris now is this what's going to have is this what we're going to need in 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 europe in paris in, in, in major centers everywhere we're going to have to have a israeli style uh, defense in, in, internal defense system or something i hope not uh, I hope <laughs> you hope not. Huh? I, I it's it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you come to Paris and there it is. And it's like, well, that's a fucking mood killer. But in all, you know, in all seriousness, there needs to be a point in which people stop pussyfooting around and say, look, this idea is very harmful it can continue to be very harmful and it can lead to bad things. Here's examples X, Y, Z. 
it needs to stop. Now, I'm not saying for the people that are moderate Muslims that would never hurt a person on this planet. You know, I'm not saying that they can't worship, but what I'm saying is this fundamentalist idea of kill everyone that doesn't believe in Allah. And if they won't join you, just cut their fucking head off has got to stop. And it, I think it's going to get to the point in this country, at least in the U.S., where the U.S. is going to have to be severely threatened and for them to even move in such a manner that would require the special forces to just go in there and fuck them up. I mean, look how long it took the U.S. to capture bin Laden. And I've read several sources and several different stories where people have said they had good intelligence that he was there for a significant amount of time and did nothing. So. Well, I know. Um, there's really not much more you can say on the subject. Um, but what I do want to say uh, and to talk on a totally different issue is last week, remember, we had our uh, broadcast kind of cut short yes well we had an internet outage of some sort so that's what happened oh fun i think or, or youtube glitched or something happened and we just went off there yeah so shit. Uh, so shit happened <laughs> shit does happen yeah. i mean you can't another thing i wanted to touch on and uh there's a there was a a person by the name of Jamal Williams, and I'm going to share the comment, Jamal Williams, who said, you guys need the Lord and God, Jesus Christ. He is real. This is what he says. That he is real. He loves you and wants to save you from sin and darkness. Repent and turn to the Lord and be saved. Being religious ain't going to change you or save you. You need to be born again of the Spirit. All right, I'm going to challenge you, Mr. Jamal Williams. Come on in. Uh, tell me why. Uh, tell, give me this evidence that he is real. This is this is the thing that gets me. He is real. Period. Done. All right. Come in, in and let us know uh, where you get that information from, please. Right. So, got that out of the way. I mean, much. last time I checked, I had Jesus, and I didn't like him. That's right. You're, you're intimately familiar with Jesus, pardon the expression. Oh, well. Now, I, I know that you were touched by Jesus. Now, can you tell me on this doll exactly where? Um, Actually, I think it was touched in the fucking head. Uh, maybe somebody hit me in the head with a Bible when I was a kid. I don't know. Uh. I really, honest to God, I, I think I think I am fortunately one of those people that was born in the section of world I was born in, got raised in the kind of faith that I got raised in, and was smart enough to get out. I mean, because had I been born in any other circumstances, like, for example, in the Middle East, I might have easily easily fell in with those uh yeah not so nice you were, hold on you were in you went to the middle east no no okay. i was saying i was glad that i wasn't born in the middle east because when i was growing up religion wasn't a thing it it just was what it was mm -hmm. and you didn't question it and didn't think about it and until i started thinking about it it never really was an issue for me. And then once I started thinking about it, it became a huge issue. Because Listen, I saw... John, if God wanted you to think, he would have given you a damn brain. He did. Oh, apparently. Right. Well, well, technically, he didn't. Uh, what happened is millions and millions and millions of years of evolution. Ah. Is that what has, happened? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, it, makes more sense. No, yeah, yeah. That does make more sense, huh? Yeah. I mean, I'm not... I had someone earlier this week share something with me. And it was talking about how it was possible to be an atheist 
and still have a belief in God. And I yeah, said, tell, tell me, yeah, all right, sorry, that was that kind of what, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I looked at the article, and at first, I wasn't even gonna read it. I was like, look, I reject this by the name of the title alone. So I read this article. And rather than give me evidence of how a person can do this, it was all apologetics in a way to say, who said God has to be anything other than a force that just kicked it started? It, a total deist point of view. That I think deist point of view is just as dumb as any theist point of view. Exactly. It's dumb. It still, it still implies a an intelligence or a consciousness or a something that, uh, that 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 either that has to take up space or that has to have been uh created itself and all this kind of nonsense right it, 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 you can't presume you can't i don't know how you can presume something you cannot know i just don't get it well, I think some people can do it because they're adept at bullshit. But aside from that, I, I really don't. It's, I get very finicky mm -hmm. when people speak for me, just as a oh, person. Yeah. So, okay. like, if, if, like, I was to, if something was said and someone said, well, John said this, if I said it, I'm not usually too worried about it. If it's wrong, I get insanely pissed. And I've always been that way. I can imagine where if something like me, who according to theology is inferior and just fall, uh, you know, just nah, just well, not worth a fuck. Mm -hmm. What would a greater being be doing up there while everybody else carries out a whole bunch of shit in his name that may or may not be true. Uh, we're pr I'm pretty sure it's not fucking true. Uh, I'm pretty sure the whole goddamn thing's bogus. But to me, the idea that you have to have this benevolent God that created everything Mm -hmm. If he created everything, why the fuck's he worrying about me? Piddly ass me, piddly ass you, when he's got planets that are millions of the time, million times bigger than us, mm -hmm. trying to hold them and not let them crash into each other, not fuck something up over here. Mm -hmm. The idea that a God exists is one of the things. I think it's one of, and I use this, in reference to, I believe it was Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, where uh, it was something along the lines of the greatest trick the devil ever pulled on mankind was convincing he didn't exist. Uh, I think the actual greatest lie ever told to man was God convincing man he did exist. Um, when you look at and this, I think, bothers some people. Uh, when you look at old mythology, be it Greek, be it Roman, be it Norse, you always see a hero. Uh, there's there's several heroes that kind of just go together and, you know, intermingle. And as you know, the Jesus story isn't unique to Christianity by no means. So I, I think that when people see that and they come to terms with it, I, I really hope and I really feel that Christianity and modern Judeo-Christian belief structure is slowly on its way of becoming mythology. Slowly? Slowly. Very fucking slow. Oh, not, no, not, you know, it's not fast enough. So we got to do something to prod it along or something, right? Well, I would say euthanize stupid people, but some of them are fun for amusement. 
So we can't do that. Hmm. I don't know what uh, I don't know what uh, the the solution is. Uh, they're just it's obviously going to have to be a political solution, right? One would think. I mean, but again, this comes back to my my, my original point. I don't understand. Is the world so shocked? Are the may are the are the leaders of the of the major powers of this planet so in such shock? Are they in like the George Bush shock when he first heard about the Twin Towers, you know, when he just sat there in the kindergarten? He just sat there listening to the kids or whatever for like, I don't know, seven minutes. Are they, is this what's going on? Like nobody knows what to do, so it's like do nothing? Well, I I would hardly call airstrikes nothing. I, I don't by no means think that. How did they help stop the Paris attack? Tell me. Now hear, hear me out. All right. I, I don't now, as far as the Paris attack, no, there was nothing they did to stop it. Now, in retaliation, yes, fine. However, I don't think until every world government has a similar story, and this, this bothers me to say, or the vast majority of governments have a Paris or a 9-11 style attack, I think it's going to take something catastrophic like that for them to even get to the table to realize, hey, look, this is a fundamentalist belief structure that we kind of got to eradicate quicker uh, rather you know, than That's what really pisses me off is that we know it's going to have to take something catastrophic. We can stop it. We, it <laughs> I agree. You know, even when it when it becomes catastrophic, like how are you going to stop it? And if you, if you, if you if you can stop it when it becomes cat catastrophic, you can fucking stop it right now. I agree. It's kind of like putting a band aid on a bullet wound. Yeah, I guess it, um, whatever. Well, I mean, it's not going to fucking help you much. Uh, That's true. And it it's one of those things where. I think people are so concerned, especially in today's culture, with going back to an area of, especially in the U.S., a Cold War type era of very much us and them. And I don't think people like to realize that sometimes not everyone is a good guy. Sometimes there are miserable fuckheads. And if we don't have people that are readily willing to deal with miserable fuckheads, then it's kind of like this cat and this giant cat and mouse game. That's totally ineffectual or effectual at all. Okay. I got a, I got a, a, a question for just for, sure. for the world really. All right. So you, here you are, got this with this seventh century cult trying to, take over the world and impose their cult cultish ways cultist ways on the rest of us and they're doing it with barbaric ferociousness and no one and we're not doing anything about it and we're, we're not really talking about it you know we're talking about it now but uh no one's really talking about it to the to, to the point where they're actually acknowledging that it is actually Islam, that it is the problem, and it's not just the people, it's actually the ideology, it's not just some people. And I think that's a serious, serious problem. However, what's a lot more serious, it seems, to those of us who speak English and are in North America and on the Hangouts, is this flat earth. Um, yeah, we were discussing this last week, this flat earth uh, theory, conspiracy theory, whatever. Who, how does that take hold in a world where we've got this, when we've got ISIS? How does flat earth shit become a topic that we need to worry about and, and actually needs to take up hangout time? What What's going on? Tell I me. I think it's, in, today, in today's society, people have an ever-growing need to be wanted. I've seen it 
with, you know, the advent of Facebook, the, you know, social media blowing up. Mm -hmm. It seems like everybody has this feeling of, I want to belong to something. Well, that's fine. Belong to something. But then you have these people who I don't think are screwed too tight to begin with. I, I, I think something's a little off to begin with. And then they find every conspiracy theory they can find. They say, you know what? Fuck science. This is what I believe. And here's how we're going to prove it. And then they go on this terror of just bullshit with non-evidence, with basic just lies, not truth. And sooner or later, that giant shit ball starts to pick up steam. And it collects other people. And then before you know it, you have a community of these fucking idiots that don't want to look and say, look, this is what the evidence shows. Uh, we have known the world is round for how many years now? Uh, I don't think we've, we've uh, established that yet because there's a huge movement against it. So we just don't know. All, not all the evidence is in yet. I, <laughs> it... It's one of those things where you either, okay, okay, to me, there is so much, like you said, with Paris, there's a bunch of other shit on this earth that are vastly more important than motherfuckers that think we're on a disc floating in space. I hate to fucking tell you, we've been to the moon, we've been back from the moon. We've seen the fucking world. We know what it looks like. We're well, we're well the fuck aware. And if there was any way, shape, or form that a flat earth was reasonably possible, our top scientists would have said something. It wouldn't be a bunch of fucking chuckleheads on the internet who think they have a bright idea. The closest thing to a bright idea they could ever get is if they shoved a light bulb up their ass. No, that I is how. I have an idea now that you're, you're talking about light bulbs. Why don't we start a GoFundMe for every single flat earther, okay? A GoFundMe for them to go to the, watch the next rocket launch in Florida or wherever so they can actually see the, the damn thing go up in the sky. And they can probably watch on a monitor right next to them a, a, a camera that they know is in the rocket that can, you know, what that, 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 that'll show the Earth as it's as the rocket is rising and they'll be right there. There can be no better proof for them than actually being right there and seeing the proof. So I would like every flat earther to have a chance to go and watch a rocket launch. And uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to start a GoFundMe or some kind of a program. Uh, so, Flat Earthers, I want you to all register at uh, uh, watchthenextlaunch.com. I, I seriously. I'm just kidding, think, by the way. I, I seriously think if I did start a GoFundMe campaign for Flat Earthers, it wouldn't be to send them to watch a space shuttle launch it would probably be to get them an education buy them fuckers some books um yeah you just can buy them a book but will they read it fuck no it guarantee get them an audio book if the lazy fuckers can't listen to it then they deserve to be that stupid well i you know audio books can be listened uh, in such a way that it's in one ear and out the other well that's true but i'm we have where I come from. My mom always used to say, if you were doing something that wasn't right and it was counterproductive to you, she, and, but you were really trying, she would never look at you and say, stop it, you're fucking stupid. She would look at you and say, sweetheart, you're sweeping with a broken broom. Why don't you try this? Now, I think those motherfuckers didn't have anyone in their life to keep them accountable for fuck all of anything. They never had peers, which I, I think is one of the things that a lot of people don't understand about the atheist community 
if you go out, if I was to go out and make a video tomorrow and I was espousing a shit ton of un, unfounded claims and it drew negative attention, every atheist would tan my fucking high. Mm -hmm. I would have a line of people out the door trying to rip a chunk off my ass because I was stupid and put that forward. With the flat earth community, I don't think they have that kind of correction. I don't think they have that kind of process in such a way where they can say, well, that argument's not credible because the whole fucking thing's not credible. I mean, it, it well, bothers. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what we'll do with a GoFundMe. We'll, we'll, we'll get the Flat Earth Society and we'll, we'll determine all the, we'll let them determine who the leader of this Flat Earth Society is. And then, assuming that the leader of the Flat Earth Society has everybody's trust that he's in the Flat Earth Society, then that one person can go and verify that the Earth is uh, a spherical. Can we do the rocket thing? Can't we just launch them all into fucking space and just leave them? Well, that's unrealistic. Well, no. I mean, you go fund me. It's for realistic one. to send somebody to NASA to go and watch a rocket launch, though. But hear me out. We privateer it. We get, you know, independent rockets. Uh -huh. We send one person up at a time. And once they don't come back, we put up another GoFundMe. We get the money, we send them up. It's one jackass at a time. It may so not we're be. Have, we're going to have a whole bunch of orbiting jackasses? Is that what you want? No, want? no, because one, once they get up there, the cold vacuum of space will crush them and I'll never have to hear them again. Ooh, ooh, ah, that sounds painful and terminal. Well, you know, so stupidity at some times. Well, I know, but stupidity isn't exactly a capital crime. Well, I, sometimes I know it, it used to be centuries ago, but it shouldn't be now. Well, no, it should. I mean, to be willfully stupid is it, it's one of those things where you have to almost try. Well, like vandalism is being willfully stupid. Well, I agree, but I'm talking. OK, fine. Willfully ignorant would be a better term. I don't think I don't think willfully ignorant is possible. Oh well, I suppose it's possible in a way, but you then but then you're not being you're not being honest, right? You're being dishonest. True, but look, I mean, look at how many people of, and I know this growing up where I did, we had uh, a lot of Amish people out just outside of town. And they were some of the nicest people in like person to person contact. If you ran into them at the store, they were very nice people mm. amongst each other. They're fucking assholes. So it's, it kind of makes me wonder how a society like the flat earth society would intermingle like that. Would they be social to one another or would they just be trying to chop each other's legs out from underneath them? Just to spite them. I, I, I don't see why there'd be <clears throat> any um, friction between them at all. Hey, people are dicks. Not flat earthers. Are they? I'd imagine. Oh, dear. It, it's kind of one of those things, like, I, I can't say. I can safely say I've never met a flat earther I didn't like because I've never met a flat earther. I can name um, a half a dozen of them for you right now. How about you don't? In I the agree. hangout, in the hangout community, uh, I don't. I won't. If, if, if uh, I don't want to out them. <laughs> well, I mean, how? Because it is. It, well, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I think. I honestly think that it's a. Um, it's just a, it's a game. Is what I think. I, I think they're pose. I they're really pose. Do. It's just a game. They're just trying to you know stir it up. Um, and that's why I think it's not worth even talking about and, 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 and we should focus on, on the shit that's going on and not so much the shit that's going on. There's two things to focus on that if <clears throat> we don't do anything, the shit that's coming, um, and that's pretty much it. What, one of the things though, that I think with, I, I at least know for the U S during September 11th, um, mm. 
you will see, and I, I saw it in Paris for the most part, you see a lot of people saying, once all this bad shit happened, we give a fuck. But had those same people said we gave a fuck six months before, I, I agree. Maybe the whole thing could have been stopped. I, I With the idea of... Okay, let me stop and preface this. I feel this is just my personal opinion. To know that with all the advancements that I have seen in my lifetime, the technological investment advancements mm -hmm. that we are still in a world where people cannot get through their fucking heads that killing a person for no goddamn reason other than a belief is something that needs to fucking stop. It needs to go the way of the Buffalo and just be fucking forgotten. And until I, we see an influx and in something that I think would drastically help, uh, at least in the United States, to bring awareness to this kind of shit, is be very careful who you put in front of a fucking microphone and talk about these subjects. You're not going to get the whole story from Fox News. And with the bulk of America turning to Fox News, we're only going to get one side of the story. We need to get people one informed. Hold on a sec. <clears throat> Are you saying that the bulk of America watches Fox News, really? Do they? Fox News is, I believe it, if it's not the most popular news source in America, it's damn close to like the first or third. Oh, my. What are the CNN up there as well? Yeah, I believe it's like, I think it's Fox News, CNN, and MSNBC. Or MSNBC, C CNN. Well, that's pretty scary. Some scary shit. But then again... I don't know. I think Fox News is pretty, is pretty um, spot on when it comes to foreign coverage, foreign news coverage. Well, yes and no. Uh... uh you can't, yes or no is not an answer. I, I Well, let me rephrase. <clears throat> All right. The idea that, yeah, they tell you what the fuck is going on, but for the most part, it's not presented in a light in which it's easy or remotely digestible. Rather than just saying, hey, uh, 128 people were killed in Paris, they say 128 people in Paris were killed in this sight or this slight against God by this false religion of Islam. We don't need all that false religion shit. Both religions are bullshit. Just tell us what the fuck happened. Give us the facts and move on about your fucking day. Well, I don't think that you can call a religion false. All religions are not false. They 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 are re they there. They're true. They're religious. I mean, they're there. They're a religion, right? Well, you can't say it's a false religion because there's no such thing as a true religion. You know, if, I agree. If that I was, agree. Yeah. So, but by calling a religion fa religion false is is, is 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 literally dumb and and arrogant. Well. Yeah. Talk to a lot of conservative and fundamental Christians. They do it all the time. Okay, you, conservative Christians, fundamentalist Christians, right down there, there's the join link. Get in here. Come on, let's have you. Let's have you. <laughs> It'd be fun. We'll, we'll talk to some fundies. No one's going to come in here because they know that they are beaten right from the very beginning. Well, no you know. Fundies will come in here. I saw, I, I was watching a video of, it was a whole bunch of Latino kids cussing at Donald Trump. <laughs> and it was made by the same people who did the feminist videos of like the little girls cussing and stuff. And I was watching this and this kid, he's like five or six, calls Donald Trump a racist or like a racist jackass or something like that. 
And I'm looking at this and I'm going, you know, kids are smart. I agree, you know, that they, you know, a parent was like, hey, or an adult was like, hey, say this horrible shit for shock value. Now, granted, uh, obscenities don't upset me. I, I was born and my third word was fuck. I've never stopped using it. So I, I don't see the purpose on why I should, you know, mm -hmm. hasten it. Um, but I think when you come to an area, be it any melting pot of culture, you're going to have, you know, a people who are like, well, I desperately want it to stay this way. Mm -hmm. Something like Islam. Oh, or, I think we lost you there. We lost you there. Yep. You're back. You're back. Yep. Something like Islam or fundamental beliefs of any kind when it starts taking a toll on human life, that's when you need to really look at it and say, okay, how do you think this is effective? How is this helping your cause? It's not. I mean, realistically, there's a fuck ton of them, but there's an equally larger number of not them. And I think it's going to take a more collective amount of not only people of non-belief but people of belief people in the muslim world tell me something is it fair or is there any justification or um i don't know is there is it a good idea i guess to insist that all refugees or migrants who come to the west be secular and all those that are religious and muslim and want to practice their religion in peace and quiet or whatever, go to live in another Muslim country. Um, I, I just think that would be the, if we're going to absorb um, a, a, a huge foreign community, I would, uh, I would insist that they be a secular community uh, primarily. Is that, is that something that, that is against human rights or is that, is that fair? I don't know. What do you think? Well, I mean, in today's society, you can't overtly look at somebody and say, look, you're not, I mean, as the way, the way it is today, you can't look at somebody and say, you're not going to be happy here. I suggest you go over there where you could be happy because you're going to fucking offend somebody. But in reality, I don't think that when a person comes into a country, depending on what they are, what they're doing, why they're there. I'm not one to just say, oh, okay, come on in. If you're fleeing a foreign country because you killed your entire family, that's some shit I want to know about. If you're coming because you had a horrible life and want to try to start over, that's something else I want to know about. And congratulations that you got here where you can do that. But I think, I think what it's going to have to, what's going to have to happen is humans are going to have to come to the understanding that just because a person believes something so strongly that it's ingrained to their very psyche does not give them the fucking reason to stand there and take another person's life or fuck another person in the avenue of, you know, existence. Okay. Well, on the subject of taking another person's life, um, as your bone, as your bone dragon, in the in the um, in the side chat uh, on the YouTube page, she's he or she asks me, Sydney, what do you think about Black Lives Matter and the ongoing Jamar Clark case? Um, well, I don't. I've never heard of Jamar Clark. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. Um, and Black Lives Matter. 
what do you mean black lives matter what do you think about black lives matter well I, uh, I think he's asking what do you think he or she's asking what do you think of the movement there's a um, movement there's a movement called black lives matter yes it's uh it's basically from what i've gathered it's a bunch of people that are marching to stop police brutality and the victimize or victimization of black people by police uh i agree with some of the things they say i disagree with others that they say i don't think there needs to be all out assault on cops i don't think cops need to you know run in fear for their lives but i do agree that black lives matter black to me so it's one, a cop thing it's yes, all about the, so who's it, jamal clark I, I don't know fuck if i know hmm. jamal I, clark case i don't know either i most but what's time, black lives matter why 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 would it be black lives matter and and not say like all lives matter or just lives matter or, or like why is that why why black life i don't get it why is this, i understand that the, the killing and all this kind of stuff but it, it just seems that you're stirring the pot when you say black lives matter that's what i think oh i i agree to some degree i mean i understand that in this country it is black people and other minorities that are primarily harassed and uh, not only harassed but beaten by the cops. You don't see a lot of white people getting the shit beat out of them. And that I can understand. However, I, I do think when you say black lives or Latino lives or white lives, it is kind of decisive. Um, I, I agree it should be all lives matter. Uh, I'm much more, as far as looking at people, much more of an egalitarian. As far as I really don't care what color a person is, what they believe, so long as they don't actively seek to try to fuck with me. I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I'm not going to fucking destroy somebody else if they don't try to destroy me. However, I'm not going to set idly by and watch somebody get the shit beat out of them either regardless of whatever skin color they are you don't but, know you're not going to stand idly by and watch somebody get the shit kicked i am no not me i can't i, I, I can't some in i i just well, can't what if you have a sandwich in your hand like a, or a hamburger well, what are you gonna you're gonna drop your hamburger or you're gonna eat your hamburger i can eat later well, what are you gonna do? eat your hamburger and take care of the problem or what well it depends on how small the problem is a big problem. Well, if it's a big problem, then yeah, I drop my fucking hamburger. I can oh, eat that's not pro that's see, prior 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 priori prioritization is obviously not your strong suit. Well, see, here's the thing. If I have a person that is absolutely getting the ever loving shit kicked out of them and they have every reason to get the ever-loving shit kicked out of them, <laughs> I'll eat my fucking hamburger, and I'll laugh. Now, if this is some innocent person that's getting fucked up for no reason, I'm more inclined to drop my hamburger. Well, I I, I, I look at the... Uh, I remember the movie Dirty Harry. Did you ever see the movie Dirty Harry with Clint Eastwood? Yes, I've seen the movie Dirty Harry. The ha uh, hamburger scene? Remember that? Yes. Vaguely. Well, he's in the restaurant having a hamburger and all the shit happens outside with bank robberies and whatnot. So he walks outside and he's picking off these bank robbers one by one while he's chewing his hamburger. It is pretty brilliant. Well, man's got to eat, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But see, I grew up, where I grew up in Indiana, I had an influx of, it was a very small very redneck, very dumb town in a lot of ways. And you could see it by some of the people. Like there were people that have never seen a black person in their life. But, really? oh yeah, oh yeah. I grew up with a lot of people who 
when I was younger, I'd never seen anyone of different pigmentation than white. Especially well, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. That, that, that's so what? I'm sure there's people living in, in Africa, in big cities in Africa, who grow up all their lives never seeing anybody other than black. And that's perfectly fine. However, no yeah, that's not. But when you're in an area like that, it's very easy to breed a lot of people that dislike a person solely based on the color of their skin. They're not like you. They don't think like you. It's it's a very, very nasty concoction if you get stupid-minded people together and give them a target. Well, I guess, yeah, I suppose. Hmm. But I don't know. The race card in America just seems to be so overplayed. It's. I agree. I've heard. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, it's kind of just like it's like the flat Earth, the flat Earth stuff. It's like bullshit. Get rid of it. I think a lot of people. What what really gets me with today or any kind of movement, is when you start to see people like black be a Black Lives Matter or feminists, or Christians, or whomever that start to say their suffering is somehow on par with segregation and the civil rights movements, how the suffering is so much similar. No, it's fucking not similar. Someone called you a bad fucking thing. They didn't sick a goddamn dog on you. They didn't spray you with fucking fire hoses. Mm-hmm. You fucking nitwits. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think that somewhere along the way, the world as a whole decided that it wanted to coddle people a lot more than to just say, okay, here you go. You're an adult. Don't kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Control. There's just too much. I don't know. There just seems to be a, some, some, it kind of seems almost organized. <clears throat> and um, I don't want to, believe that really i i totally agree uh i i don't think it is organized now granted me and you two pale white motherfuckers talking about something like black lives matter we will never understand the inner struggles of black lives matter it's not exactly. something exactly. it's not something we will ever fucking know about however well hold on a minute i just well, want to remind you that I grew up in apartheid South Africa as, you know, from birth to 20. Well, see, you'll know so about it. I know, what, I know what it's like, you know, to be discriminated against, and I know what it's like to see discrimination against uh, other races. So that's why, that's why I, I don't understand about the Black Lives Matter. So, yes, mm -hmm. they do, but so, no more than, no less than Chinese lives or pink lives or whatever black lives. I think it's one of those things where too many people in today's society do not understand how important life is as a whole, not just their life. Well, how important, life. Hold on. Why, why do you, how important is life as a whole? Let, let me ask you that. Where, where to do me? You, where, how do you put, yeah, how, how do you put a, uh, a value on life? You can't. So, like, you, well, you said people don't understand how important life is. Well, how important is life? Anytime you get a finite chance to do something, it should be treasured. And life, er, contrary to popular fucking belief, you only go around one time. Yeah, but and, some people some people don't last for a, a minute and some people last 100 years. I mean, it, how important, how valuable is life? As somebody who, and, and like I said, this is just my opinion. As somebody who grew up with a terminally ill sibling and seeing somebody who knew they had a finite time on this planet for definite, it is one of the most underappreciated things we have on this rock. How did that person handle knowing the that that person's life was actually not only finite we all know that but but 
imminently imminently over well i i can tell you the truth he fucked a lot of people he had as much sex as humanly possible in his short life that was one number two he learned every goddamn thing he wanted to know about he never wasted a second that he could if he wanted to know it he found it out and the one thing that he taught every one of us who had a significant longer time was that never ever shy away from something that could be fun or have an interesting story. Hmm, good advice. Uh, yeah, my brother Will. He had uh, cystic that fibrosis. Was your brother. Oh my. Yeah. Cystic fibrosis. Isn't that horrible? Isn't that where your lungs kind of. Yep fill up with fluid and uh he was born he was born <laughs> he was 11 years older than i was mm -hmm. when he was born the doctors told my mom he wasn't going to live to nine he lived to nine then they told him 13 he lived to 13 then they said 16 when he hit 16 the doctor that had been seeing him at riley's children's hospital in indianapolis had quit and got a new doctor and that doctor was like well shit well let's see what you got and he lived to be 38 and it wasn't even the cf that killed him he contracted a bacterial infection called pseudomonas and because his lungs and his immune system was already compromised that's what ended up killing him but that little fucker he lived his life like it was going out of fucking style because in a sense it was so he knew all along that he was terminal oh, yeah. he knew all along and did he oh. did he go the religious route at all not much uh mom said we never really talked about it me and him uh mom said he believed but for everything that i've ever talked to him about he was he didn't give a shit one way or the other uh, it never really factored much into him. He mainly focused on how much he despised people who kept saying their religion was superior and their religion was better. And if a person was saying how someone needed to believe in God, Will was normally the first person to tell him to shut their fucking face. So I don't think so. It's interesting that you actually knowing this, and, and seeing this uh, actually took the root of, of, of the theist, the, the theistic root, knowing that you're, you know, having a brother that's born with a, a terminal condition, wouldn't that make you question from the very beginning, the wonderful creation that is man? It does. It does. And it did. It did a lot. One of my big sticking points that led me to that led me to realize that none of this was worth a shit was I had gotten out of church. My brother had gotten sick and it wasn't the point that really nailed it home, but it was more of the affirm or the affirmation of points that I already knew that I've already come to realize in myself that were true. Growing up, the way I maintained faith and I thought about it was my brother was an asshole in many ways. My brother was a fuck and I loved him so much for it. But there were things that he would do that I have never seen another person do. My brother could charm his way into any fucking situation because what the fuck were they going to tell him? No. Oh, well, no big deal. Hmm. How, he, how long did, ago did he pass? Uh, almost five years ago. This February will be five years. Right. Um, but he had gone and the way it was, was every time it was brought up, it was always reaffirmed with, well, you know, the good die young and God gives you the best people for the shortest amount of time. And in the beginning, in the beginning, it's passable. But as an adult, it's not passable. You look back. It's a lie as an adult. 
yeah. And then looking back, you realize, no, it was just shitty genetics and shitty life. You know, boom, exactly. here it is. Yeah. And I mean, you know, things, things, shitty things do get passed down <laughs> from generation to generation. It's oh yeah, we all know it does. I have I have other friends. <clears throat> I have a friend right now who has CF and is living with CF. He's my age, and he's an atheist, and he's never not been an atheist. And one of the things that a lot of people are like that talk to him that I've seen people talk to him about God. He goes, "Trust me, God doesn't exist. If God exists, I wouldn't be in this fucking condition." So, <clears throat> I think realistically with people, I, I think when we get so wrapped up in all the shit that's going on in our lives, all the things that aren't going to matter 10 minutes from now, aren't going to matter 10 seconds after that, we get so wound up in all of that shit that we lose sight of things that, one, make us happy, and that two make even existing being worth it. I mean, I go and, and I look at all of these people that do these miraculous things, be it an athlete, be it a musician. And when they look and you'll be like, wow, you have a great talent. They're like, yes, God gave me a gift. That, that kind of shit. And same with my brother Will used to annoy the ever loving fuck out of it. Because it's like, God didn't give you that gift, motherfucker. You worked your ass off and achieved that gift. You fucking trained hard. And I've only seen like one or two people ever say something to that effect. I, I saw a violinist one time. A woman made a comment about God giving her such a great talent. She's mm -hmm. like, no, I worked my fingers to the blood. Or to blood. <laughs> to That's how I got this down. <laughs> yeah. I don't. It's one of those things, I think, for myself, living in a world where <clears throat> people see different people and different ideologies and different belief structures as they're either, you know, the end all or be all of everything. It, to me, it, it's a dangerous thing. I, I, I mean... I never once thought ever in my life up until here recently that I would live in a world where I was going to be in my early 30s and still say the beheadings were a thing that happened. Never once. But yet I'm still fucking living here. I mean, I, I, I kind of had enough faith in humanity when I was younger that I thought we would have wrapped that beheading shit up by the time I was in my early 30s, but apparently mankind has fucked me over and we haven't yet got there. But I, I have a friend who's an atheist. He's also very, very, very much sort of involved in his, in his uh, secular religious community in a way. But he's an atheist. And I showed him the video of one of the beheadings, I think it was one of the first beheadings that took place by ISIS. Yeah. And he watched it. It was a very short video. He watched it and he looked at me and he says, he says to me, that's fake. It has to be. So I'm just wondering if there are still people around who still think that all this beheading stuff is just all fake. Well, if there are and they legitimately think it's fake, I, I feel sorry for them because it's not one of those things that should be idly taken. Um, the truth is no matter what we believe, regardless of how accurate or right it could be, we have to consider the fact that, you know, we might be fucking wrong. I mean, without evidence. Now, I'm pretty goddamn sure if the guy was to do a little background and a little research, he could find out that whomever was decapitated, yes, it fucking happened. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't approach everything with a grain of, like, skepticism, or with a grain of skepticism. 
However, when it's right fucking in front of you, we really can't exactly say, uh, yeah, I don't think that's real. Yeah. Um, I wonder why people are more prone to be flat earthers then. Uh, um, and have skepticism there. And are the same people who are flat earthers, are they also skeptical about the beheadings? I wonder. Well, I don't. Well, I, I doubt that they're a very good skeptic if they believe in a flat earth. Um, I mean, shit. There's, there's being skeptical and then there's just being a fucking idiot. Well, yes, but when you're a flat earther, you're just being a, a, a fucking idiot. Let's face it. There's nothing to be skeptical about, really. I think. Well, I think you'd almost have to be some... I'd almost say delusional to believe in a flat earth. So if, if just the idea of believing in a flat earth, I, I kind of think that would be, if there was a such thing as a skeptic card, I think that would have grounds to say, let me see that son of a bitch. You can get this back later. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't every flat earther a Christian like, I know there's no Muslim flat earthers or Jewish flat earthers or atheist flat earthers or there's all Christian flat earthers, right? Uh, to my knowledge, I've never seen a flat earther that didn't claim to not be a believer in God or a believer in the Christian God. Uh, no, ding, 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 red flag, red flag. Hello. Yep, yep. Another, another topic that's just not worth talking about, which we're talking about. Um, we can, of course, wrap up the show if there's nothing else to talk about. If nothing, nobody else has joined us. Uh, nobody else has suggested anything. I thought I'm I'm pretty much exhausted. My uh, topics that I had um, because I kind of want to focus on what's going on more than what's not going on. And what's not going on is no flat Earth. That's not going on. There's um, <coughs> There's no, uh, you know, Jesus, there's no religion, there's no supernatural, there's none of this going on. And I don't want to focus on that. I'd rather focus on something more uh, current. Uh, well, I hope that by next week, things will have unfolded uh, around here, or not around here, but on, but on, you know, on the on the world's political uh, scene, and and we'll have a lot more to 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 discuss, and hopefully we'll have some more people. Uh, in here to get some so we can get some diverse I agree I uh I can tell you um I did have something happen this morning and this is kind of a funny moment uh I can tell you if you're ever in the sit if ever in San Francisco or around the area and you take uh public transportation um for some goddamn reason the buses today smell like piss and corn chips so if you're ever around that, have fun. That's an interesting day. Well, you don't get much more interesting than that in a day. Thanks, John. Thanks for joining us. Uh, is there anything you want to plug? Do you have a uh, Do you have a YouTube or anything? You want yeah, to you guys can go ahead and check out my channel. It's Stark Raving Kane. Uh, you'll know because it's got uh, my nice little uh, image of. Ziggy, which is Jigglypuff flipping people the bird. I'll put it in the details down at the bottom. Sounds good. Uh, right. Check it out. I should have some more content up and out now that I'm not ill. So that's it. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming. We'll see you again next week, yep. hopefully. Of course. Have a good one. All right. Uh, and, and you guys, thanks for all of you who have watched us live and for the masses who will be watching us later. Thank you very much. Hey, and don't forget, Secular TV has a Patreon account. Please consider donating. And uh, 
while you're considering that, um, we will um, get your decision in one week. Okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.